Hey, what's up? Thanks so much for joining us tonight for The Church Online right here at The Church at Visalia. My name is Kevin, and man, I'm so excited that you are with us today because we are continuing our conversation out of 2 Corinthians. And tonight's message is simply titled, God has a job for you. God has a job for you. Well, hey, again, this evening we are talking about how that God, the creator of the universe, actually has a job for you. If you have accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, there's a reason that God has saved you. Not just, not just only so the fact that you are forgiven and you go to heaven. There's, there's, a great, there, there's a greater, there's a different purpose that God has. God has a job for you. And we see this in Paul's letter to Corinth that's recorded in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, starting at verse number 11. Now, we're going to read a chunk of the Bible today, and I'm not even apologizing for it because it's God's Word. It's kind of a cool book. So, we're going to read 2 Corinthians chapter 5, starting at verse number 16. Here we go. So, from now on, we regard no one from a worldly point of view. Though we once regarded Christ in this way, we do so no longer. Therefore, or because of this, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old is gone and the new has come. All this is from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. That God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting men's sin against them. And he also committed us to the message of reconciliation. We are therefore Christ's ambassadors, as though God were making his appeal through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. God made him who had no sin to be sin for us, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. Oh, I love this passage of Scripture. It's so beautiful because this passage of Scripture lays out what Jesus Christ has done for us, what God has done for us through His Son, Jesus. We see this right here, that if any man is in Christ, he's a new creation. The old is gone, now the new has come. We see that God, God rec- we were reconciled to God because God made Him who knew no sin become sin for us so that in Him or through Him we might become the righteousness of God. We see that through Jesus we have become righteous, that we are now right with God. But listen to what it says here. It says here, all this is from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. It goes on and says, and he has committed to us the message of reconciliation. The Bible says there, Paul writes to the church of Corinth and is writing to us today that we as Christians, we have, no, have, have not only been forgiven of our sins and made right with God, but now because we have been forgiven of our sins and made right with God through Jesus reconciling us to God, God now has given us the same job that he gave to Jesus to be ministers of reconciliation. God has a job for you. And the job that he has for you is for you to help reconcile people that you know who are lost and separated from God. God has now given you the job to reconcile them to God through Christ. To put it in very simple terms, God has given you the job of sharing Jesus with your friends and family. God has given you the job of sharing Jesus with your friends and family. And so many times we think, oh, that's the pastor's job. That's the elder's job. That's the Sunday school teacher's job. That's the, the, you know, that, 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 that's the kids director's job or the youth pastor's job. That's what we're paying him for. No. You. God has given you the spirit of the ministry of reconciliation. God has given you the job of sharing Jesus with your friends and family in the hopes that they would become right with God, just like you did. You see, somebody in your life shared Jesus with you, and because of them doing what they did, you now 
have experienced a new life in Christ. God now wants you to pay it forward. He wants you to do the exact same thing that Jesus did for you. He wants you to do that for others and share the kingdom of God with them in the hopes that they become a Christian. This is what God wants us to do. It's plain and simple, in black and white, God has given you and me the ministry of reconciliation, the job of sharing our faith with our family and friends. So how do we do it? You're probably watching this and you're saying, man, that's, that's intimidating, Kevin. How do, I, how, do I, you know, how do I do that? How do, I, how do I share Jesus with my friends? How do I reconcile someone who's lost with Christ? Well, today I, I, I want to talk to you about two things. Is first of all, in order to do that, number one is you need to do what Jesus did. And the second thing is you need to do what Jesus said. So if you want to be like Jesus and take on the ministry of reconciliation, of reconciling a lost person back to Creator God, you need to, number one, you need to do what Jesus did, and then secondly, you need to do what Jesus said. So here we go. So the first thing you need to do is do what Jesus did, and you need to go to them. You need to go to them. If you notice, Jesus wanted to reconcile lost humanity back to God. So what did he do? He left where he was, heaven, and he came down to where humanity was. Jesus got into our world. And if you are going to reconcile your friends and your family with God, you have got to get into their world. The old cheesy saying is people don't know how much you people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. People don't care about the kingdom of God until the kingdom of God gets involved in their life. You need to get involved in the life of the person that you love enough to share Jesus with. You've got to first go to them. The second thing you need to do is, is you need to serve their physical need. What did Jesus do when he came to the earth? Did he just come to the earth and start preaching the kingdom of God? No. What did he do? He served people's physical needs. He gave them food. He turned water into wine. He, he healed the sick. He raised the dead. Jesus met their physical need. He came to the earth. He got into our world, and then he met our physical needs to let us know that the kingdom of God, that God cares about them, their person. And it's the same way with you. In order to have the spirit of reconciliation, you've got to get into that person's world. You need to go to their ball games and hang out with their, you know, their, their, their friends and their family. You need to go out to dinner with them. You need to not just work beside them, but get to know them. And the second thing that you need to do is you need to meet their physical needs. Meet their physical needs of friendship. Meet their physical needs of camaraderie. Meet their physical needs of community. Meet their physical needs of, of, of maybe even some financial help or some advice. Meet their physical needs of, of, of babysitting their, their children from time to time. Meet their physical needs. Let them know that the kingdom of God that's inside of me actually cares about you. So you got to do what Jesus did. To have a spirit of reconciliation, to share the gospel with other people, you do what Jesus did. And you get involved in their life. And then secondly, is you meet their physical needs. And then the third thing is, is you tell them about the kingdom of God. You tell them about the kingdom of God. At some point, it has to go from just thoughts and actions to words. To words. Jesus, he, he, he came to where we were, he met the physical needs, and then he taught the kingdom of God. The kingdom of heaven is like this. The kingdom of heaven is like that. He, he corrected sometimes. He encouraged sometimes. But he spoke the truth in love. And if you are going to actually have a spirit of reconciliation and share Jesus with, and do what God has told you to do, which is share Jesus with your friends and family, you're going to have to do what Jesus did. Listen to me. Listen to me. It's not the pastor's job to do this for you. It's your job as a Christ follower to do this for your friend and family member. Get into their world. Meet their physical needs. Talk to them about the kingdom of God. Now, the second thing that you need to do is, is you need to do what Jesus said. You need to do what Jesus said. God's given us a job, and that job is to share, it's, it's to share the good news with others. The way that we do that is, is that we do what Jesus did, and then secondly is we do what Jesus said. There's a lot of things that Jesus said to do, but when it, when it comes to interpersonal relationships, that's going to help us 
reconcile people back to God and know and show them that God loves them and God cares for them, there's three things in particular. The first thing is, is that Jesus said that if, if you have offended your brother, go and make it right with them. If, if you've offended your brother and your sister, go and make it right with them. I'm going to say that again. If you've offended your brother or sister, your friend or your family member, your coworker, go and make it right with them. That, 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 that is so huge because if you don't make it right with them and they stay offended at you, they're also going to not be close enough to you to hear about Jesus. If they're not close enough to you to hear about Jesus and to believe in Jesus, they end up not accepting Jesus and spend an eternity in hell. Listen, if you've offended somebody, go make it right. Apologize. Talk openly. Make it right. If you have offended someone, go and make it right. That's part of the spirit of reconciliation. The second thing is, is that if, if someone asks you for forgiveness, forgive them. Not just one time or seven times, but 77 times, Jesus said. Forgive them. Why? Because that's what God did for us. God forgave me of these great sins that I committed against Him and others, and God has forgiven me for them. Because of that, I now should forgive my friend or I should forgive my family member when they ask for forgiveness as well. This is going to let them know that forgiveness is readily available for those who confess. And all that looks a whole lot like Jesus. That whenever we, someone asks us to forgive them, we, we forgive them and make things right. And the, the third thing that Jesus wants us to do as far as what he said to do, it's going to help to, to bridge the gap between the lost and God, is to show good deeds. He said that no, no, no one has a light and puts it under a, puts it under a basket, but they, they let the light shine so that everyone that's in the room can see it. Therefore, or because of this, let your light so shine before men that they see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. We should show them good deeds. At work, you should be the best employee at your company. As a, as a father, you should model for your children how to love your spouse and how to be a good dad. You, 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 should, you should show good deeds at work, good deeds at home, good deeds at the softball field, good deeds at the t-ball uh, uh, um, field with your, your, your children and the other people. You should be the best parent in the stands. You, you should be the best employee at work. You, sh you should show people good deeds. Work hard. Work hard. See, that's what Jesus said to do. And so many times, like, man, I'm a Christian and I want to do what Jesus said. But listen, what has Jesus said to do? Well, J Jesus said that if, our, if we've offended our brother to go and ask them for forgiveness. Jesus said that if someone asks us forgiveness, we should forgive them. Jesus said that we should show our good deeds. Let's do that. Oh, we live in a world that desperately needs to hear the good news of Jesus. And the only way they hear the good news of Jesus is through the people that have already experienced the good news of Jesus. It's our job to share the good news of Jesus with our friends and family. And the way that we do that is, the way that we walk in and have this, this ministry of reconciliation, is we just simply do what Jesus did. We go to them. We meet their physical needs. And we talk about the kingdom of God. To have the spirit of reconciliation and to, and, 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 and to do what God has asked us to do is we do what Jesus did, but we also we do what Jesus said. If we've offended someone, we ask them to forgive us. If someone asks us to forgive them, we forgive them. And then we show good works. The world needs us. The world needs you. Your neighbor needs you. Your coworker needs you. The, 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 the other parent that's on the, the team that your child is on, they need you. They need you to get into the world. They need you to love them enough to talk about the kingdom of God. They need you to, to, to model for them what it is to be a good parent and, and, and a good person. They need you. God has a job for you. It's a big one, but oh, it's a joyful one. We get to be the hands and the feet of Jesus. So some questions I want to leave for you today is this. 
what resonates with you the most and what you've heard tonight? What, what resonates in your heart? Just talk openly about that. What do, you, what do you sense God telling you, number one? The second one is, is when it comes to doing what Jesus did, which one of these do you need to work on the most? When it comes to doing what Jesus said, which one of these do you need to work on the most? Take a few minutes, talk about that, and then we'll come back. Well, hey, thanks so much for joining us for the church online right here at the church at Visalia. God has called us to the spirit of reconciliation. God has a job for you. He wants you to do what Jesus did. He wants you to do what Jesus said. And he wants you, he wants you to shine a bright light, to share the good news of Jesus Christ with your family and friends. I pray this week that you will do that. And if you would like to give towards a mission and the vision of the church, uh, the information's popping up, please feel free to give there. We're so thankful for your faithfulness. And I'm going to be praying for you this week that God will give you the opportunity to do what Jesus said. And God will give you the opportunity to do what Jesus did. Today, go. Go. And share Jesus.